Holy cow. So, I am back everybody. I am so sorry for the huge delay between the last video and this one right now. I always say, oh, I've got all this stuff going on. I probably sound like a broken record. I totally agree with you, but I really have. Um, I had to prepare for Mask Fest 23. Oh my God, those of you that came to that show, what a what an amazing time it was. And I knew it was gonna be big. I knew there was gonna be a, a really good attendance because we have not had one since 2019 due to the pandemic and all of that. So, needless to say, the attendance was overwhelming and the amount of people who have never met before that were online all these years, they all came to the show, which was amazing. Um, I got to meet a lot of old school people in the monster hobby. Um, friends that were buddies with Frank from the Frankenshrine back in the 80s. Like, I was talking my head off nonstop. I built a crazy booth and I can't thank Eric Austin enough for putting on one of the best shows ever. Um, I saw some people trying to knock it that weren't even there. Um, good luck with that because it was a huge hit. And if you want to talk about monsters, monster masks, vintage monsters, that was the show of shows. So thank you, Eric. Um, on to this unboxing video. First of all, I got to say there's a show heck first of all there's a lot of videos coming um, I've got the trick shop wall done set up it looks crazy it looks like you're uh oh it looks like you're actually standing in front of a wall in a vintage trick shop that's a whole video in itself um, mask fest video is what I'm working on tonight lots of footage um, I'm hoping to upload it maybe by tomorrow night um, but when this box was on my porch today, I'm like, that's it. I got to do an unboxing right now. This is something special. Um, judging by my t-shirt here, maybe you're going to guess what's in this box. Um, we'll get into that in a minute, but lots of progress on the rest of the basement over here. Um, pinball machines are now down here. The floor has been done. I've been working on the walls. I've been hanging up some of the vintage posters. Um, getting ready because this coming weekend, next Friday, I've got a TV crew of 10 or 12 people coming here, a whole television crew coming to film Collector's Call. That's right. I'm going to be on Collector's Call with Blair from Facts of Life as the host, which is crazy to me. Um, so anyway, so much was going on. With me building the, the uh, displays for Mask Fest, that took me a long time. It took two months. I had people saying, oh, I want to help you. Yeah, we're going to work on it. Nobody showed up to help me with that. So it was all on me. And uh, it was a huge hit. Everyone at the show went crazy over that display. Enough babbling. Let's get into unboxing this crazy piece. And uh, this is a very high-end piece. This was a very, I don't want to say expensive, pricey, but it was. it cost some bucks. And when you see the type of work it is, you'll know why. It's by one of the best guys out there that makes this type of stuff. Props and masks and I call it artwork, of course. It's all art to me, but um, Patrick McGee. If you don't know Patrick McGee, I'm going to put his Instagram on the screen. If you've ever seen his booth at Mask Fest, Monster Palooza, his stuff is insane. Um, way over the top. Hyper-realistic. Um, just crazy 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 and uh i've never owned a piece by him but i do now so let's check it out on top of everything i just told you there's a lot of new stuff from the Frankenshrine, um, piece, other pieces I've collected out there from other collections since we've all last spoke. And uh, so there's gonna be a lot of videos coming on some rare, rare things, you guys. So 
and you guys what I was trying to say is normally you know when that furnace is running in the background I turn the fan off so you don't hear that thing blowing in the background however it is so hot out today and tomorrow there's no way I'm turning it off so we got to deal with it um, it said like it's a hundred and two feels like 114 so and it's like 10 30 at night right now so just deal with the noise I know it sucks but hopefully it's not too bad I could not wait for this thing to show up Patrick McGee like I said he made uh, he made cool pieces when I first seen his work it was at a mask fest show probably in 2018 or so and he had this crazy Beetlejuice piece I remember he had uh, Crimson Peak pieces that were just unbelievably detailed and gorgeous and uh, his booth like it just stood out because it was just way over the top quality hyper realistic type stuff and uh, so I started following him on Instagram and I noticed he made a certain character oh my god what? he made a certain character from a certain film that's one of my all-time favorite movies ever horror films one of the best of all time it's a film about what the fuck? it's a film about American werewolf in London let me turn this shit you know what you're on vacation you gotta text me go be on vacation maybe you're gonna guess what could be in this box by Patrick McGee those of you that know his work already know what these look like but holy shit when I saw his version I went bananas over it coughed up the money and ordered one you know, I don't want to say someone's work is expensive because you get what you pay for, all right? I think most of you that watch this channel will agree. And uh, if it was something that was really expensive and not worth the money, I wouldn't be unboxing it right now, you know what I mean? If you realize the time it takes to sculpt something like this, paint it, produce it, you know, it's crazy. Someone wants to charge, you know, if you think it's something is really, really expensive, go look into how this stuff's made first. Go compare it to a regular production Halloween mask and then come back and study something like I'm going to show you now. And you're going to see a major difference in the look of it. Oh my God, I'm pretty sure <laughs> it goes like this. All right. All right, Patrick. If you're watching this, really excited this is one of those characters one of those creatures monsters whatever you want to call them that I would be I was in, first introduced to this film in reading Fangoria magazine you know when you're a little kid in the 80s early 80s it ain't like your parents were like let's go see the latest terrifying film with the kids sometimes I was lucky that would happen but in a lot of cases I would first discover the films in Fangoria and then when my parents would finally rent them on VHS and they would say oh you're not supposed to watch this one I was like okay as soon as they went to work and my grandma came over or something we just put them right in my brother and I would watch everything so again I urge you guys to go to Patrick McGee's Instagram and look at his work <clears throat> I've seen him do multiples of this for sure I had to wait for him to make this one for me it took, it took a little while but I said just do it man I don't care how long it takes just I will wait for this because this is gonna go upstairs in my bedroom with some of the other you know higher-end pieces that just don't fit down here <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Whoa. All right. I'm sure you've all guessed by now who this is. Let me. Let me straighten this Nazi helmet. It is the warmonger. 
Holy cow. This thing is insane. I've only took a, a little glimpse of it so far, but Jesus, this thing's badass. Oh my God, this comes off too. The helmet does come off. I'm not even gonna mess with it at the moment, but. Oh, whoops, a little drop, but we better not let that. Here we go. Don't fuck that up, Bree. <sighs> Let's bring the camera down. Oh my God. So I wanted a killer warmonger and that's exactly what I got holy smokes look at that that is sick man that iconic scene in David's dream when those uh, those Nazi demons all come in and just massacre the family you know he had his uh he had an Uzi or a Mac 10. I think he had a Mac 10. But one of the most memorable scenes in horror film history. Patrick McGee signed a tag there. Wow. That is so cool. Holy cow. Man. And those of you that know this uh the original is one of the great creations of mr rick baker and the original the original prop sold in auction when did that sell i don't know in the past probably in the past two to four years i'm thinking for tens of thousands um either 20 grand or 40 grand something like that the real movie prop sold for a shitload of money and uh, and it did not look new anymore, of course, like this. Believe me, I would die to have the original prop in my possession. But this, I mean, this is probably the next best thing to have in the actual piece. Having one of Patrick McGee's insane copies. And this is, this is resin. Yeah, this is all resin, which is great, you know. Latex, as you guys know, does not last forever. This sucker, being uh, resin, will last a long time. It will outlast most human beings. Holy shit. What do you guys think? Um, I think a lot of you will agree, number one, that it is... One of the best movies of, of all time. If you are into vintage horror, <laughs> you know, 70s, 80s era stuff, um, I think you also will agree this is probably one of the finest warmongers uh, you can get your hands on right here. Damn, is that badass. <laughs> That's a keeper. Holy smokes. He did a nice job uh, recreating part of the old uniform you know the colors of the uniform in the film were brown and green like this and uh, did a nice job on this good job Patrick it was absolutely well worth the wait I'm gonna see if I can get the helmet off here oh yeah <laughs> let's take a closer look paint job you know you could see why something like this takes a while I don't remember exactly how long this took it was months you know um, I don't know if it was three months four months five I, I really don't remember I, I don't even care um, I knew I wanted him to make it perfect and I, I'm he's a perfectionist you just tell his work does not leave his you know shop until it is absolutely flawless so man Patrick thank you thank you he does do other American War American Werewolf in London pieces so I am absolutely thinking about getting something else from him 
fuck, that's cool. <clears throat> Look at even the strap is weathered, you know, on the helmet. That's so cool. Look at that. Nice paint work on that helmet. Looks like an old metal helmet, doesn't it? thoughts in the comments do you like Patrick's work are you a fan of this film do you have any American Werewolf in London stuff maybe screen used expensive props whatever I, I want to hear about it so tell me and uh, I will be working on videos a lot now especially with the month of October right around the corner it's coming <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna be doing this year for the month of October I know a lot of people are gonna be expecting another 31 days of Halloween that remains to be seen. Guys, that's so much work. But you never know. Right? Thank you again for waiting so long for a video to come out. Um, like I said, lots coming on the old Rudy's World channel here. And uh, again, big, sh big thank you to Eric Austin for making Mask Fest 23 incredible. Holy shit, what a show. I wanted to see monster masks and the whole room was loaded with them and uh, what an overwhelming attendance and especially people came out of the woodwork to come see my display I built you guys are gonna love that if you haven't seen it already I thought the cat was back there um, I may go over I may do a video once you see the mask fest video I may do a video talking about each mask that was in my display what I brought to that show because a lot of people were asking about things what they were how old they were whatnot but uh Maybe we'll do that too. So thank you everybody as usual and I'll see you soon.